Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and in this tutorial I'll show you how to build a pulse oscillator that works like the one in the original Nintendo Entertainment System. Um, this is used for a lot of sound effects, especially like the ones you'll hear in Galaga, kind of like this. like laser type sounds. So yeah, this is a great easy way to get some 8-bit sound effects and it takes up basically no CPU. All right, so let's begin with a new ensemble. And as a sound source for this project, I'm actually going to use a primary pulse sync oscillator from the oscillator menu. And I'll set this up as easily as possible to begin with and we'll make some simple edits along the way to shape it into the sounds we were hearing at the beginning. So let's start with an amplitude of 1 and a pitch decided by the incoming note pitch and we'll use the gate velocity to control the sync input. Now the Nintendo has a control for the width of the pulse oscillators and it has a total of four options. So I'm going to use a list with four um, menu options and 12.5% um, means the amount of time that the wave is above zero and the corresponding width value to get that wave is 0.75. I found these using an, uh, an oscilloscope by the way, so nothing uh, too special here. So we have a total of four options, 12.5%, uh, 25%, 50%, and 75%. And 25% uh, and 75% should sound the same um, unless you're using them to um, mix together with other oscillators. Maybe they'll sound somewhat differently, but they should sound pretty much the same. All right, so that's our width control. And the other thing I want to add right now is just a simple AR envelope, which is one type of envelope that the Nintendo can have with no attack time and no release time. There are a few other envelope types available and I just don't have time to create them all right now but um, they're fairly simple. One of them is you could mimic in Reactor with uh, a simple AD envelope with no attack time and the other one is a simple looping envelope. So I'm just going to set all this to mono. Um, the pulse waves in the NES are mono. And the next thing I want to do is change the way that we're controlling the pitch of our oscillator because one of the characteristics of the original NES waves is that um, it does not have perfect tuning. So it uses a variable called T for timer um, to control the frequency. So I'm going to take our incoming pitch and translate it into a frequency using an exponential F module and then create a, another um, macro that we'll use to calculate the um, value of T for our incoming frequency. And in order to achieve this, I'm going to use a, an equation I found online at wiki.nesdev.com. We're going to take the frequency, multiply it by 16, and divide the frequency of the CPU over that. Um, so the CPU is uh, operating in America. I believe it operates at... Uh, speed of 1,662,607 hertz. Um, so we'll take the output of that 
and uh, subtract 1. And then we want to find the nearest whole number, which is where the um, tuning error is going to come in when we round to the nearest integer um, to get our value of t. Um, there's some rounding error there that causes our oscillator to be slightly off pitch. So to round to the nearest whole number, we just use a quantize module with step size set to 1. Next I want to make a, another macro to translate from t to a new frequency value. So I'll name this one t to f, rename the inputs and outputs, and this um, function is basically an inverse of the function that we just did. So we can add 1 to t, multiply the sum by 16, and divide the product of that beneath um, the CPU speed. And we don't need to round this value. The reason why we needed to round um, t in the first place is because it's stored as an integer inside the Nintendo hardware. It can't have any fractional values. But when translating back to frequency, we don't need to worry about that. So in order to use these macros to control the frequency of our pulse oscillator, we simply take the incoming frequency and translate it to a t value. And then we can take the t value and translate it right back to a frequency. Um, and with the added error from the quantize module, we'll get a slightly different output. And then we can translate the frequency back to a pitch using a logarithmic f module. And that's it. So at this point in time, all we really have is a poorly tuned pulse oscillator with a simple width control that could easily be more powerful simply by using a knob. But once we add in the sweep unit, we can start to get some pretty interesting effects. So the sweep unit is a method that the NES uses to modulate the frequency of the oscillator. And in order to emulate it, I'm going to use a clock oscillator, which is great because it allows us to create event streams at any speed. So the sweep unit has a base frequency of 120 hertz. And that's further divided by a variable called the period, which has a value from 1 to 8. Um, so these two values together control the speed of our clock oscillator. And um, for every cycle of this oscillator, we're going to get two events at the output. One that's equal to 1 and the other one that's equal to 0. But we're really only interested in having this clock fire um, once for every uh, cycle. So what I want to do is just use a separator module and we'll filter out all of the zero events. So each time the sweep unit receives a clock, it's going to take our current t value, which we've calculated from the incoming note pitch, and we're going to do a little bit of math on it and store our new value um, both um, in this value module I'm creating here and at the note put pitch input to our um, pulse oscillator. So we'll take our current t value and we're going to add it to a version of itself that's been divided by a power of 2. So I'll create the divide and the power modules. X input to the power module is equal to 2. And the Y is going to be a user controlled variable um, with a value between 0 and 7 and a step size of 1. 
and we're working with integer math here, which means we're only working with whole numbers. So um, after we've done the division, I'm going to use a modulo module that um, is going to strip off any fractional values in our output. So by using a modulo with a b value of 1, the div output becomes the integer of our um, input, and the mod will output any fractional values. And then finally, we want to decide whether we're adding this value to our original value or subtracting it from it. So we can achieve this with a button um, that's equal to either 1 or negative 1. And of course, when we add a negative value, that's the same thing as subtracting. So we can either keep this value at the same value or make it negative. And when we're done, we want to store the sum of these two values back into our value module so that we can use it again next time we get an event from our sweep unit. And we also want to give it back to our macro here that is translating from frequency, uh, sorry, from a T value to a frequency. So we can connect the output of the merge to that as well. Make sure to make everything mono. Okay, so other than a little bit of rearranging, we're pretty much done here. Um, one last thing I want to add is that when our T value goes um, below 8 or above 2047, it turns off uh, the pulse oscillator. So in order to mimic this, we can very easily compare our T values to both 7 and 2047. Make sure that it's greater than 7 and less than or equal to 2047. Um, and then multiply the two outputs of the compare modules. If they're both equal to 1, then the output of the multiplication will also be 1, and our amplitude can stay at 1, otherwise it'll be set to 0. A few things we could do to improve upon this would be to expand um, the options for the envelope to make it a little more like the original Nintendo. Another thing we could do would be to replace the pulse oscillators with band limited ones made in core with no aliasing because the primary oscillators do have a little bit of aliasing and it's my understanding that um, due to the way the Nintendo was made uh, the sound waves do not alias because all the frequencies that are played are um, directly divisible by the master clock frequency. All right, so I'll just take a minute to rearrange everything here and then give you a quick sound sample to make sure that everything is in working order. Once again, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com. Hope you guys enjoyed this series on Nintendo sound design.